Greetings and welcome to the official live DAR School Congress event. My name is Morgan Lake and I have the privilege of serving as the national chair of the DAR School Committee. Daughters are hooked on DAR schools during the Van Buren administration and together we're making a real difference in the lives of children. Please welcome our President General, Denise Doring Van Buren. Well, I surely do wish that we were together in order to celebrate the annual tradition of the DAR School of Anna Continental Congress. But I thank you for being here with us virtually in order to ensure that the important work of this committee continues to have visibility and to be supported and celebrated here within our national society. Allow me to express my appreciation to our national chair, Morgan Lake, for all that she has done on behalf of the schools and most importantly, on behalf of the citizens. And I thank all of you. I know that for many, there is a strong, passionate connection to these schools and to these students. And I'm so grateful for the work that you do in order to support them. So enjoy this DAR school event and the rest of our virtual 130th Continental Congress. Thank you, Mrs. Van Buren. I am delighted to introduce you to the rest of the DAR School Committee. Peggy Carney Troxell, Recording Secretary General, serves as the Executive Liaison to the Committee. I'd like to take a moment to thank an amazing group of women, the past National Chairs. These women dedicated years of service to our National Society and the DAR Schools. The National Vice Chairman of the DAR School Committee are Lamira Parks, National Vice Chair of Communication, Tammy Clemens, and Cricket Krigler, National DAR School Tour, Lucinda Greider and Amanda Thorin, National Vice Chairs of the DAR School Congress event, Rebecca M. West, National Vice Chair, DAR School Scholarships, and Diane Janis, National Vice Chair of the Friends of the DAR Schools. Please welcome our DAR School Committee Division Vice Chairs. These women do an incredible job of communicating and reporting on the activities in their respective divisions. They did a fabulous job this year of pulling together compiled reports for the committee presentation. Please don't forget to visit the website and review the complete presentation. Northeastern Division, Joyce Cahill. Eastern Division, Sally A. Seitz. Southeastern Division, Betty B. Hera. East Central Division, PJ Stebe. North Central Division, Julie Schrader. South Central Division, Lauren Durr. Northwestern Division, Tawny Kern. Southwestern Division, Joan M. Dimmitt. Thank you, ladies. It is an honor to recognize women serving in special roles by appointment of the President General at our DAR schools. President General's Advisor to Kate Duncan Smith DAR School, Judy C. Osler. President General's appointees to the Board of Trustees at Kate Duncan Smith DAR School, Stephanie Chasse, Ginger Poffenberger, Elizabeth Rutland, Carol Schwenk, Peggy King Scully, and Anne Maddie Yamras. Thank you for representing our National Society in your service to the DAR schools. Welcome to our state chairs. The state chairs are the real starfish of this committee, and they have done an amazing job angling for the DAR schools in the past year. They are the conduit for reporting, and we appreciate their efforts to share the highlights of the work in their states for the major Congress presentation. These busy ladies have been dangling School of Sunfish pins to their members and using their creativity in all kinds of ways to promote the DAR mission of education throughout the world. Do you still need a School of Sunfish pin? Drop them a line and they will hook you up. Let us now hear from our DAR school representatives. It's my pleasure to introduce to you Will Anderson, the new executive director of Heinemann Settlement School. Mr. Anderson. Well, thank you for providing me with an opportunity to speak with you today. 
I've been the executive director at the Heimann Sandler School for exactly one month now, and I've already had the privilege of meeting many DAR members, both in person and over the phone, and I look forward to meeting many more of you uh, here in the near future. Um, with this being my very first uh, time participating in a DAR event, I thought it might help just to provide a little bit of a background, uh, more about who I am. Uh, I was born in Kodiak, Alaska, and spent most of my career working in uh, an executive leadership role uh, within the corporate world, uh, serving the Alaska Native community. Uh, however, I've always been very engaged uh, in a number of education, arts, and culture-focused nonprofit organizations. I've, I was drawn to seek the executive director position at Hyman Settlement School because I've always understood the importance of education and the value of embracing culture and heritage when working to strengthen the economic and social well-being of a region. The Alaska Native community, of which I'm a part, um, has historically suffered from a number of uh, economic and social ills that I believe were caused by the forceful stripping away of culture. And I further believe that the way to combat these ills is through addressing educational needs and by celebrating and embracing traditional culture. In much the same way, I see the programming at Hyman Settlement School in four key areas as playing a vital role in the Appalachian region. Um, these four areas of programming include our dyslexia intervention programming where young students are screened and then supported in their journey to overcome the barrier to learning that affect one in five students. Our food waste programming which seeks to solve the persistent food insecurity issues in the Appalachian region by restoring the historic relationship between people and the land. Our literary arts programming, including writers workshops and retreats, and our partnership with the University Press of, Ken of Kentucky, devoted to publishing authentic Appalachian stories from talented writers who live in the region and our traditional arts programming where we are working to strengthen the sense of pride and love of Appalachian culture by providing folk arts education in uh, six not county public schools. We also coordinate um, artist residencies and after school music education programming. Well, as you might expect, uh, the pandemic uh, uh, over the past 15 months has made the execution of our carefully designed uh, programming much more difficult. Uh, what I'd like to do in the remaining couple of minutes I have left is tell you about the important role the Daughters of the American Revolution have played in making the last year and a half a time of tremendous growth and success for our organization. During the past year, our art dyslexia program served 235 students, nearly double the number that we served up just prior to the pandemic. As we continue to hope that life will return to normal, we expect to double that number again. Uh, we have been able to expand our reading labs program uh, to three additional school systems that include 11 new schools. And I believe none of this success would have been possible without the generous support of the DAR. And, and let me explain. Uh, back in 2018 and 2019, our organization reached out to the DAR to help us meet a critical need. Our IT infrastructure was very old and failing and donations from DAR members from across the country allowed us to update and completely replace our old computers. When the pandemic struck, we were able to quickly pivot by offering our dyslexia intervention and other programs on a virtual platform. So rather than having to worry about how we were gonna be able to function virtually on an old and failing computer system, we already had the tools needed, the tools that were provided by the DAR to quickly adapt and actually expand our reach uh, to students who wouldn't ordinarily have been able to participate in our in-classroom programming. But the vital support from DAR members didn't stop there as needs arose during the year for things like um, headsets or, or computer mice or any uh, wide range of, of school supplies the continuing support from the DAR enabled us to send what was needed to the students so they could participate virtually in our programming. Last summer, uh, we were able to serve 
30 students through an entirely virtual summer dyslexia program. And it's a program where we provide intensive tutoring in reading and math. And during our current summer program, which is ongoing as we speak, we have 15 students attending in person and 33 students participating virtually. The computer equipment the DAR provided is allowing our summer dyslexia program to operate at full capacity this summer. In a similar way, uh, we're seeing our food waste uh, program realize substantial growth. Last year, in partnership with Berea College, our Grow Appalachia program served 64 county, uh, families in Knott County. This year, we've been able to expand to a neighboring county and add an th uh, additional 30 families to the program. Hyman Settlement School is extremely grateful for the support the DAR provides. Even in the short time I've been leading the settlement, I've heard of many wonderful stories of children and adults from the region who have been touched by your generosity. Through your donations and contributions, you touch lives. And for that, at Hyman Settlement School, we are extremely grateful. Thank you. Thank you, Will. We will now hear from Richard Meyer, Director of Alumni and DAR Relations, Hillside School. Mr. Meyer. Thank you, Madam School's Chair. Hello, daughters. It's an honor and a privilege to bring you greetings from the students, faculty, and staff of Hillside School. We thank you for all that you do to support our school. It is a shame that we could not all be together in Washington, D.C. once again this year to celebrate everything that you have done for us. But it makes me look forward to the times that are coming in the near future when we can all be together again. In spite of all the difficulties that COVID has that, that have been caused by COVID, we have made some great accomplishments this year. We have accomplished a lot at Hillside, and your support for us has never wavered. With that in mind, I want to take you through the highlights and one low light of the last year. Last spring, like everyone else, we had to shut down send the students home, and do all of our classes online through Zoom. This set up for an interesting uh, thing that we discovered, however. Many of our students had siblings at home who attend other schools who were also in the same boat, having to do their classes at home on Zoom. This meant that our parents were able to get a side-by-side -side comparison of our classes and those from other schools. I will tell you that the feedback we received was that our classes were outstanding and they were tremendously pleased with the job that we were doing compared to those of other schools in the area. Now, last summer, we put a number of protocols into place and made a number of changes with the idea that by the fall, we would be able to keep everybody in school, uh, in person and safe throughout the year. These included adjustments to the daily schedule and to the, and to the school calendar. It included COVID testing for all students, faculty, and staff twice a week. And it included, as did everybody else, mask wearing at all times. But in our case, our masks included over a thousand handmade masks that were given to us directly from the DAR from around the country. In September, we returned to live in-person classes and the protocols and the masks worked. We were able to stay open all year with students in, with students in school. And though, uh, and, and though we did have a few isolated cases of COVID among the students and the staff during the year, we were able to quickly uh, isolate and quarantine those cases so that there was no spread on campus. In December, we launched a new program at Hillside called the Hillside Hallmark. This is a program in which students participate in either an independent study or a special class of their own choosing. These classes and these studies are designed to be hands-on projects in which the students keep journals and ultimately make a video presentation at the end showcasing their work. Hallmarks this winter included podcasting, building a go-kart, recycling, photojournalism, and digital media, media marketing. The program was a huge success and one that we will continue through the future. Also in December, we completed the construction on our second new dormitory in the last 18 months, and we opened it in January. These two new dorms provide a much more comfortable, modern living space for our students. Though they were singles during the year because we had reduced numbers due to COVID, they will be, when we return this fall, 
all the rooms will be doubles on campus, which will be a far a, a vast improvement over the three, four, and sometimes five students to a room that we had to that we had to do in our old setting. Now, the most unfortunate event that happened this year, well, other than COVID, occurred in February, when our 100-year-old barn at our farm burned to the ground. We were tremendously sorry to lose this beautiful uh, historic structure on our campus. It's still hard to drive by the farm and see the space where the barn used to occupy and know that it's not there. Fortunately, no people or animals were injured. We have plans not only to rebuild the barn, but to expand on it. Towards that end, we have hired an architect who specializes in historic barn restorations and have begun to design a building that will not only house animals and equipment, but will also contain classrooms for a lower school and a certified commercial kitchen. In May, we held our graduation ceremony for our 29 seniors, all of whom have been accepted to secondary schools. During the ceremony, one of our alumni, John Rao, who is now a senior at MIT, majoring in architecture and computer science, addressed the boys through a video clip. He spoke of how confused and reluctant he had been when he arrived at Hillside as a 12-year-old boy. He went on to say, however, that Hillside had changed his life and that he was forever grateful for the part, uh, for, the, for the path on which we put him. That sentiment is shared by many of our students. Your support makes stories like this possible. Thank you again for your continued support of the Hillside Boys. We, look, we all look forward to the days when this pandemic is fully behind us and we are completely back to normal. Hopefully, those days are coming soon. Thank you, Rich. Please welcome Caroline Hart, Chief External Relations Officer for Crossner Communities for Children. Mrs. Hart. Thank you, Mrs. Lake, and good afternoon, daughters. I am thrilled to be here and bring greetings from our children and staff in North Carolina. Many of you know Crossnor as Crossnor School and Children's Home, and even before that, just the Crossnor School. Just last week, we announced a name and brand refresh, and I'm really excited to share with you that we are Crossnor Communities for Children. One of the organization's strategic goals is to go Crossnor's brand as a regional leader in high quality, holistic child welfare services. We know that a safe home that builds resilience in children is built through ongoing collaboration, commitment, and collective engagement. Considering this and our tremendous growth over the last five years, it was really important for us to honor our 100-year heritage while acknowledging our growth and our vision for the future. We believe Cross North Communities for Children does represent our mission and values and as we work to build what we are creating in our community. Our mission remains the same, only our name has changed. And because of friends like you, we are continuing to provide state-of-the-art, evidence-based services in foster care and adoptions, therapy services, family preservation, youth independent living, and educational programming at our very own Williams Academy on the Mountain Campus, Kingswood School on the Winston-Salem Campus, and school-based therapy programs throughout Western North Carolina. And stay tuned for some very exciting news coming soon about school expansion. I want to close with what we call our Cross Nor Anthem. I'm not sure there's anything that really describes us any better. Children want to come home. From school, from the playground, from time with a friend. For dinner, for a bath for bedtime. Going out into the world is only fun and exciting when the promise of returning home is solid and secure. That's why trauma changes everything for a child, because the need for home doesn't disappear even when safety does. This is the guiding philosophy at Crossnor. 
Our promise to children and families experiencing crisis is to value and accept them wholly, then devote our exceptional resources to addressing their needs at home or when necessary to finding alternative solutions for children and families at risk. Because an essential step in healing is to regain faith in home, to believe in love, and a loving place. This is why Crossnor gives so much to children who often feel so connected to so little. We are here with love and strength, counseling and commitment, optimism and opportunity. And that's just the start. Whatever they need is what we give. Whatever they need is why we're here. No organization is better positioned to bring hope and healing to children and families. We offer an unmatched continuum of professional care and services, and we engage with communities and stakeholders at every level to build a resilient ecosystem of support. Because children just want to laugh with friends and feel safe in the world, and then children want to come home. This is exactly what we want for them, too. So when trauma changes everything, we're ready to give everything to the child who suddenly needs nothing less. Crossnor Communities for Children is the way home. Thank you, daughters, and please come visit us soon. Thank you, Caroline, for bringing us the news from Crossnor. Please welcome Fred Mercer, Senior Advancement Officer of Barry College. Mr. Mercer. Thank you, Mrs. Lake. Hi, my name is Fred Mercer and I'm representative for Barry College. Uh, I wanna take this time to thank you for your continued financial uh, uh, donations that you're making to the school and to our students. Uh, this past year has been a challenging time and we've really missed you being on campus. Um, luckily for us, uh, One of our students has made a video which will help keep you informed of some of the changes that have happened this past year. I hope you'll enjoy the video and thanks again for your support of Barry College. Greetings from Barry College. Was that too much? Anyway, I'm Nick Fernandez. I'm a senior at Barry College and I'm so excited to take you on a video tour. It's been a year since you were last on campus, but since you've been gone, a lot has happened. So sit back, relax, and pay close attention. There might just be a test at the end. All right, here we go. First up, let's take a look at Barnwell Chapel. The restoration of this landmark wrapped up last year, but then there was COVID, so we didn't get a chance to celebrate it. But we can fix that now. Look at how amazing this place looks. Gifts from tons of alumni and friends made this restoration possible. At the beginning of the project, planners studied old photos to make sure all the updates were historically accurate. How cool is that? And the lumber, it came from Barry's own forest. The amazing windows, they're the result of sweat equity donated by an alumni work week crew. There's really nothing more Barry than that. Okay, now let's head over to the Spires. If you've ever dreamed of retiring on the Barry campus, well, now you can. Like a really nice car, this place is loaded, fully equipped, has all the options like on-site dining, leisure activities, fitness and healthcare facilities, plus a full slate of housekeeping and maintenance services. Okay, can someone seriously let me move in there now? I mean, really. Residents at the Spires are also mentoring Barry students who work there, which is so awesome. And finally, that view. No wonder the Spires has already won an international award. Next, the newly renovated Bell Recital Hall at Ford. Nothing screams Barry like the Ford buildings. And at the heart, is the auditorium that's been an inspiration to students since Henry and Clara first built it in the 1920s. Now, let's thank the generosity of over 500 supporters. This creation is singing once again. With modern acoustic touches that make it the perfect place for students to stretch their talents like never before. It is gorgeous. While COVID has kept us from sharing this beautiful gym with large audiences so far, Students and faculty are already taking full advantage of the many new features, socially distanced, of course. Moving on down to Opportunity Drive, 
let's take a look at the progress on the new animal science building. Students and faculty in Barry's largest major cannot wait to get their hands on the keys to this place. When it opens, they'll have 23,000 square feet of dedicated space for advanced study in animal health and production, including genetics, microbiology, and physiology. Phew, that sounds hard. This place has it all. Labs? Check. Specialized teaching areas? You betcha. Everything is designed to prepare students for careers and leadership roles in animal-related industries. They say location is everything, and this building has that too. It's right next to our existing science center. The result will be new collaboration in areas like One Health, looking at how humans, animals, and the environment are all connected. And last, but certainly not least, is the new hotel. A Fairfield Inn and Suites by Marriott is being built on Barry property. Next to the Rome Tennis Center at Barry College, near the Mount Barry Mall, just up the street from the college entrance on Martha Barry Highway. Okay, that was a lot of berries. When completed later this year, it will provide a comfy bed for players and spectators who come to town for the many tournaments hosted by our impressive tennis facility. Until now, many of these folks have been forced to stay in nearby cities, meaning they've been missing out on all our community has to offer. And as with all things Barry, this hotel means experience and learning opportunities for the students who will work on site. This is truly a win for everyone. Well, except for those who lose their tennis matches. So this concludes your video tour. I hope you've enjoyed this quick glimpse of all you've missed out over the last year. Okay, and now it's time for that test that I mentioned. No, I'm just kidding. I had to be sure that you were paying attention though. Seriously, we miss seeing you. Thank you for all your support and all your understanding as we've ridden the roller coaster of the pandemic. And hopefully we can all be together again soon in person. So take care. And can someone please help me with moving into the spires? Anyone? Thank Greedy. you, Fred, for sharing that presentation. It's now my pleasure to introduce Heather Green, Executive Director of Kate Duncan Smith DAR School, who will bring greetings and introduce the 2021 student representatives to Continental Congress who will also bring greetings. Mrs. Green. Thank you, Madam Chair. Good afternoon. I am thrilled to have the opportunity to report to you on behalf of the nearly 1,400 young men and women who attend Kate Duncan Smith DAR School in Alabama. And I'm especially excited because after many months of not seeing one another, the other DAR school representatives are all here at KDS where we are presenting this live presentation under the direction of KDS Patriot Vision students. You are all well aware of the challenges of educating children during a global pandemic. And I'm not just talking about the logistics of social distancing and virtual instruction. The psychological implications of isolation and lack of social interaction are serious issues that have affected our children in ways we can hardly understand. Despite all that uncertainty and change the last 15 months has brought, Kate Duncan Smith DAR School continues to serve as a source of stability and support in the Gunner Mountain community. For the 2020-2021 school year, students were offered a choice between face-to-face -face instruction and virtual learning from home, with families choosing what was best for their children. There were some bumps in the road along the way as learning had to be shifted to an all virtual format when the number of positive cases in our community spiked last winter. But instruction never stopped. We continued moving forward. And at the end of the school year, we had 84% of our students attending school in person with 16% of students taking classes virtually from home. On May 22nd, 103 young men and women graduated from KDS with family and friends in attendance in accordance with state and local guidelines. Approximately $1.1 million in scholarships and award was presented to the class of 2021. This summer, KDS elementary and middle school students were offered an opportunity to take part in a special program called Camp Marshall. 175 students rising to grades kindergarten through six whose learning was impacted due to COVID had the opportunity to receive additional academic support. 
The goal of Camp Marshall was for students to gain substantial growth in both reading and math through targeted instruction. KDS students rising to grades 7 through 12 have also been given the opportunity to receive additional support in core curriculum areas to deepen their understanding of critical standards and to recover class credits they have lost during the pandemic. Approximately 25% of KDS students took advantage of these summer enrichment programs. KDS DAR Elementary School was recently selected as a class school of distinction. The Council for Leaders in Alabama Schools annually honors four exemplary schools from each statewide district. From those 32 class schools of distinctions, eight banner schools are selected and KDS DAR Elementary School was chosen. The Banner School program has the purpose to identify, recognize, and publicize schools with outstanding educational programs which serve as models across our state. We are so proud of our teachers and administrators and our students for this well-deserved recognition. The Middle School Robotics program has expanded to include more children in the after-school clubs and has added a competition robotics team. These students are learning to apply concepts from the classroom and use critical thinking and problem solving skills while working together as a team. All things that are in demand in today's workforce. Your continued support of programs like the Children's Fund, the Health Clinic, Blessings Bags has become more significant during this challenging time. And those programs have expanded to address the changing needs of our students and our community as a whole and our students who participate in band, art, choir, family and consumer sciences, agri-science, and Patriot Vision have never been more important as artistic expression and hands-on learning offer a much needed creative outlet. Everyone has pulled together to face the challenges of the pandemic head on, but our teachers with their positive attitudes and their willingness and ability to adapt under difficult circumstances are true heroes of the pandemic. Despite the difficulties we've experienced, KDS DAR School remains committed to provide opportunities for educational and personal growth for students while emphasizing patriotism, responsible citizenship, and the historical legacy of the school. Whether in the classroom or at home, we will continue to offer access to quality education for all students. So I am pleased to report that despite the current circumstances and challenges we face, KDS DAR School and its students continue to be blessed through the special connection we feel with members of the Daughters of the American Revolution. And it is our intention that we will gather together in person for our 97th Dedication Day festivities in October. I hope to see you all there. Just as we have done since 1934, KDS DAR School is pleased to have two students represent us during this 130th Continental Congress. It is my sincere pleasure to introduce rising seniors Cole Edwards and Lizzie Hammett. Good afternoon. My name is Cole Edwards and it is an honor to be here with you today. I'm a 17 year old rising senior at Kate Duncan Smith DAR High School. I am a member of the National Honor Society and I have attended KDS since my very first day of kindergarten. And both my parents and grandmother are KDS alumni. My future plans include attending Auburn University and majoring in aquatics and fisheries with a minor in business. KDS means so much more to me than just a school I've attended for the last 12 years. KDS is home. From the time I was four months old, I've been sitting or sleeping in the stands as my dad coached basketball games. When I was three, my parents and I moved into the Indiana Cottage on the beautiful KDS campus. Lots of memories were made during the five years we lived there. My fondest memory at KDS is being a part of the ASA BFA Championship Team of the Year in 2020 on our home lake of Lake Gunnersville. Our competitive bass fishing team worked extremely hard for this accomplishment. I also represent KDS as an active member of Fellowship of Christian Athletes, Leo Club, a volunteer for Special Olympics, and a, the president of the Campus Recycling Committee, 
and a member of the varsity basketball team and baseball team. The lessons and qualities I have learned while participating in these activities will serve me well in the future. KDS, DER School, and the Daughters of the American Revolution are very special to me, my family, and our entire community. Since 1924, when the Alabama Society Daughters of the American Revolution established the school, so many lives on Gunner Mountain have been positively affected. I am thankful for the beautiful campus, unique historic buildings, the athletic facilities, wonderful staff, and countless other opportunities we have been blessed with. What really makes KDS stand out, though, is patriotism. KDS teachers and administrators work every day to instill a sense of pride and patriotism in the students. From reciting the Pledge of Allegiance each morning, to playing the national anthem before sporting events, to holding a school-wide program to honor our veterans. I am grateful KDS has taught me what it means to be a patriot, and I plan to one day raise my own kids to be patriots. I believe I'm uniquely qualified to be the Continental Congress student representative because I value the morals KDS has instilled in me. My school has taught me to be respectful, outgoing, responsible, trustworthy, and the importance of serving my community and my country. It is an honor and privilege to represent KDS as an active member of the 130th Continental Congress and throughout the next year. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Elizabeth Hammond, but everybody calls me Lizzie. I'm a 17-year-old junior here at KDS, and I have attended this school since kindergarten. I'm a rising senior, am currently ranked first in my class, and have a 4.43 GPA. My plans upon graduation include attending the University of Alabama to obtain a Bachelor of Science degree through their athletic training program. I plan to further my education by attending medical school and then working for either a collegiate or, prof or a professional sports team as a member of their athletic training staff. As a student of KDS, I've been blessed to have the opportunity to be involved in many extracurricular activities. For example, I'm, a cur I'm currently a member of the Student Government Association, where I've been the class secretary for three years, a member of Patriot Vision, and an editor of the yearbook. Additionally, I'm a captain on our varsity girls basketball team, center fielder for our varsity girls softball team, and I was selected to attend the Capstone Leadership Academy hosted by the University of Alabama last March when I was a sophomore. I have immensely enjoyed my time as a student of KDS. From the JAC performances, to everybody in the gym singing DAR or How We Love You, to ball games and pep rallies, and even to the wonderful teachers and friends, these are just a few highlights of my KDS experience. Two years ago, I had the opportunity to travel to Guatemala with Dr. Bart Bowden and the I for God Ministries to assist with eye surgeries. I've seen poverty on a scale that is difficult to describe. However, I was also blessed to see the change that one person can make in the lives of others when willing to give of yourself. This profound experience helped me to realize how similar the Daughters of the American Revolution are for us students of KDS. Members of the DAR give their time, efforts, energy, and other resources to ensure that KDS and its students thrive. And for that, I am eternally grateful. Former President Bill Clinton once said, there is nothing wrong with America that cannot be cured by what is right with America. And I believe this quote illustrates the mission of the KDS DAR school as well as a DAR organization, creating a special school built by special people with a special goal of helping others. I am honored to be our school's Continental Congress representative because being able to represent KDS gives me an opportunity to give back just a portion of what the DAR has given to me. So in conclusion, I would like to thank the DAR. Words truly cannot express the sincere gratitude that I have for the DAR and for everything you have done and continue to do for me and other students here at KDS. Thank you. Thank you, Heather, Cole, and Lizzie. I now have the honor to announce the 2021 gifts to each of the DAR schools from the Friends of the DAR School Fund as awarded by the Executive Committee, but made possible by your generous support of the Friends of the DAR School Fund. Hindman Settlement School will receive funding as requested for the Dyslexia Program Scholarships. Hillside School will receive funding for computer and internet upgrades. 
across North communities for children will receive bridge scholarships and funds for the student work program. Barry College will receive funding for a Gate of Opportunity Scholarship and funds for the restoration of Frost Chapel. Kate Duncan Smith will receive funds for a compact utility tractor. The total amount distributed from the Friends of the DAR School Fund this year is more than $132,000. Thank you daughters for your generous support of this fund. And I know we can do even better in 2022. It is my pleasure to recognize the outstanding accomplishments as reported in 2020. Donations to the Friends of the DAR School Fund topped $128,000. More than 3,000 School of Sunfish pins were purchased. 888 chapters had programs or DAR school minutes highlighting the work of this committee. 93 chapters planned a special project to benefit the Friends of the DAR School Fund. More than 5,000 members viewed the videos on the committee webpage to learn more about DAR schools and 811 certificates have been prepared to recognize the generous support for the Friends of the DAR School Fund. For the greatest total support of the Friends of the DAR School Fund in first place, North Carolina, State Regent Carol Weiss, State Chair Robin Rutledge. Second place was Florida, State Regent Kay Yarborough, State Chair Carol Ann Cornell. Third place, California, State Regent Susan Broderick, State Co-Chairs Marsha Adams O'Neill and Carol Ann Nolan. Fourth place, Georgia, State Regent Obi McCorkle, State Chair Helen Powell. Fifth place, Maryland, State Regent Maureen Tipton, State Chair Karen Shanahan. Sixth place, Texas, State Regent Susan Tillman, State Chair Beverly Waite. Seventh place, Tennessee, State Regent Cecile Wimberly, State Chair Ellen Betts. Eighth place, Virginia, State Regent Leanne Turbyfill, State Chair Adele Morris. Ninth place, Pennsylvania, State Regent Beth Watkins, State Chair Heather Razuskas. Tenth place, Missouri, State Regent Joan McGee, State Chair Christina Mearing. The greatest support by a state society for the Friends of the DAR School Fund is first place, Maryland, State Regent Maureen Tipton, State Chair Karen Shanahan. Second place, California, State Regent Susan Broderick, State Co-Chairs Marsha Adams O'Neill and Carol Ann Nolan. Third place, Georgia, State Regent Obi McCorkle, State Chair Helen Powell. Fourth place, Pennsylvania, State Regent Beth Watkins, State Chair Heather Raziskas. Fifth place, Illinois, State Regent Charlotte Lucan, State Chair Rebecca Locke. For the greatest number of sustaining supporters of the Friends of the DAR School Fund, first place, Florida, State Regent Kay Yarborough, State Chair Carol Ann Cornell. Second place, Georgia, State Regent Obi McCorkle, State Chair Helen Powell. Third place, Texas, State Regent Susan Tillman, State Chair Beverly Waite. Fourth place, Tennessee, State Regent Cecile Wimberly, State Chair Ellen Betts. Fifth place, California, State Regent Susan Broderick, State Co-Chairs Marsha Adams O'Neill and Carol Ann Nolan. Sixth place, Alabama State Regent Tammy Clemens, State Chair Susan Tomlinson. Seventh place, North Carolina State Regent Carol Weiss, State Chair Robin Rutledge. Eighth place, Ohio State Regent Kathy Dixon, State Chair Wendy Brott. Ninth place, Virginia State Regent Leanne Turbyfill and State Chair Adele Morris. And 10th place, Kentucky State Regent Carol Rogow, State Chair Susan Calmy. The chapter with the greatest number of sustaining supporters of the Friends of the DAR School Fund, first place, Gunter Mountain Chapter, Alabama. There's a tie for second place, Hunt Spring Chapter, Alabama, and John Marshall Chapter, Kentucky. There's also a tie for third place, Philadelphia Wind Chapter, Georgia, and Fielding Lewis Chapter, Georgia. I'd love to give an honorable mention to the following chapters. Cavett Station Chapter, Tennessee. Corn Island Chapter, Kentucky. Estero Island Chapter, Florida. Faro Monte Chapter, New Jersey. Hightower Ch Trail Chapter, Georgia. Joseph McDowell Chapter, North Carolina. Martha Laird Chapter, Texas. Pierre de Mandeville Chapter, Louisiana. Sacagawea Chapter, Washington. Salt Lake Valley Chapter, Utah. Sarah Polk Chapter, Tennessee, 
Sergeant Newton Chapter, Georgia, Shaco Creek Chapter, North Carolina. The chapter with the largest donation to the Friends of the DAR Schools Fund. First place, Asbury Station Chapter, North Carolina. Second place, Kate Waller Barrett Chapter, Virginia. Third place, Fort Nashboro Chapter, Tennessee. I'd love to give an honorable mention to the following chapters for having large donations to the Friends of the DAR Schools Fund. Caswell Nash Chapter, North Carolina. Bermuda 100 Chapter, Virginia. Cascade Chapter, Washington. The Richard Bard Chapter, Texas. Mary Washington Colonial Chapter, New York. The Martha Stewart Bullock Chapter, Georgia. And the Captain Nathaniel Mills Chapter, Texas. For the chapter purchasing the most School of Sunfish pins, first place Orlando Chapter, Florida. Second place chapter, Fort Pickens, Florida. Third place, the Oneida Chapter of New York. And an honorable mention goes to the following chapters for purchasing School of Sunfish pins. The Captain Molly Corbin Chapter, Texas. The Fort Stanwix Chapter, New York. Aloha Chapter, Hawaii. Washington Chapter, Iowa. The Sophia Fleming Chapter, Florida. The Louisa St. Clair Chapter, Michigan. Canandaigua Chapter, New York. All of these awards and many more by division and by size of the state organization are included on the complete list of awards and each one will receive certificates of recognition from the Office of the Reporter General. The list will be posted on the Friends of the DAR Schools Facebook page soon. Wouldn't it be exciting to hear your chapter name or state announced next year live at the in-person luncheon in Washington, DC? Let's chat about how you and your chapter can be hooked on DAR schools in 2021. First, purchase and wear your DAR school of sunfish pin and encourage others to do the same. Bait your chapter members into learning more about the work and the mission of each of our DAR schools and have a chapter program and follow that with a campaign to hook the most sustaining supporters. Tackle a special fundraiser just for the Friends of the DAR School Fund and plan to attend the in-person live Continental Congress event for the DAR schools in Washington, D.C. next summer. We will be walking on sunshine for the DAR schools. I wanna thank you for making this special effort to attend this live Continental Congress DAR school event. And a special thank you to our DAR school event national vice co-chairs, Cindy Greider and Amanda Torine, the page team leader, Melinda Shackelford, and pages Kelly Bowles, Alice Brosey, Kathleen Gillian, and Lindsay Goody. The pages have done a fabulous job of promoting this event and they have a special trivia fundraiser our fund trivia contest. Please be sure to look for the final question at the conclusion of this event. We all wanna express our appreciation to the Patriot Vision team under the direction of Dr. John Finley and students, Josie Collier, Ryan Riopel, Alex Altman, Rihanna Black, and Connor Weems. They made it possible to bring you this event live from the Kate Duncan Smith DAR School in Grant, Alabama. We thank them profusely. Be safe, be well, and just keep swimming. Together, we can make a real difference in the lives of children.